Amazing Gospel with Deaconess Victoria is a compilation of edited radio broadcasts Ag Gospel Half Hour with Deaconess Victoria. It is made up of talks comprising of a wide range of topics under the direction of the Holy Spirit, presented from a biblical perspective, in a simple and balanced manner. It is our prayer that you will find encouragement, correction, God's direction and blessing as you listen to these talks over and over again. God bless you, and may heaven at last be the portion of us all. Amen. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. This is Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria. Thank you for joining me. May you be blessed as you listen. Please let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for your kindness towards us. We thank you because you are mindful of us. We thank you because you have your hand upon us. We thank you because you are our healer, our deliverer, our rock, our fortress, our buckler, and our high tower. We thank you because you are our stronghold. You deliver us from evil, you deliver us from oppression, and you fill us with your joy and peace. Thank you because above all we have hope of eternity with you. Dear God, as we go into your word, we ask that you will speak to us, you will bless us, you will encourage us, you will strengthen us. Thank you because you love us and you died for us. Blessed be your holy name forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be the doers of your word and not the hearers only. In Jesus' name. Thank you so very much for hearing our prayers. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Today we'll be talking about new beginnings. It's the first Sunday in a brand new year and it is a new beginning. A time to hope, a time to dream again. A new year comes with excitement because it's a time to look forward to new achievements and to start over again. It is a time to anticipate good. It is a time to do more, a time to move to higher levels, to reach for the stars as it were. It is a time to start over again, a time when we look to moving away from our mistakes, failures, and disappointments, and hope to start a new and better chapter of our lives. Indeed, God is a God of new beginnings and a loving God who gives us a second chance to amend our ways. Let us read Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God can make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He can bring beauty out of trials, troubles, and ugliness. The past year can be described to have been a year of wilderness and desert, a dry and difficult year when the coronavirus pandemic rattled many nations, taking its toll on our health systems, on our sociopolitical lives and world economy. Many died prematurely. Education was disrupted. Places of worship were shut down. And so were hotels, parks and event centers. As a consequence, we had to learn to cope with a new normal, what with virtual church services, virtual classes, even virtual weddings and funerals. It was an unpleasant welcome to a new world. And so it's the beginning of a new year, a time for stock taking and planning. How should we enter into this new year? How should we take on this new year? Should it be business as usual? I think the first thing to do in taking on this new year is to do away with discouragement, do away with the negative events of the past and start on a brand new slate. The story is told of a person who visited the devil's shop and in the front shop were different items for sale. There was anger, there was bitterness, there was malice, there was lust, there was hatred and so on. All these were available for sale. But then the shopper noticed a beautifully wrapped package in the back room. And he asked the devil, what is that? And the devil said, that is my most prized possession in this shop. The most expensive item in this shop. And the shopper said, what can that be? The devil said, 
It is discouragement. It is my most prized item in this shop because I can use it against people without them realizing it. I can use it against Christians, those people of God, without them realizing it. And when they are discouraged, I can come in for the kill. You see, the devil can use several things as his agent to make you weary. As a child of God, he can use sickness, poverty, depression, low self-esteem, a difficult marriage, or even a lack of marriage. He can use barrenness, career stagnation, business failure, loss of a loved one as his agent to make you turn against God and to grow cold in your love for him. He can also use human beings to provoke, betray, lie against, scandalize, or disappoint you. He attempts to get you discouraged, and all he is after is to steal your most precious faith in God. Because he knows if he succeeds, then he can capture your soul. And so have you bought the most expensive item in the devil's shop without realizing it and have become discouraged? This is an opportunity, the beginning of this new year, to discard his possessions and make up your mind to start afresh trusting in God's eternal love. It's also a time to throw away bitterness, malice, hatred, loss, and all evil that the enemy has planted in your heart over the years. You may have lost precious possessions and are blaming God, but remember that it is the devil that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10. So believe God that he has your best interest at heart and that he is able to help you recover much more than you have lost. The devil can't keep your goods if he cannot steal your joy. Therefore, discard the things stealing your joy. Do away with secret sins. You cannot put on God's shirt and wear the devil's sandals and expect to be happy or expect God to be pleased with you. The Bible says, let him that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Praise God. And so let us repent from iniquity, from all our sins. Let us forgive all offenses, release all bitterness. Let go of the past and its pains. Place all worries in God's hands and refuse to go over them in your mind repeatedly. Instead, each time you remember the negative, painful events of the past, deliberately choose to praise God. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, The Lord Jesus Christ came to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that... They might be called trees of righteousness, that is, us children of God, the planting of the Lord, so that God might be glorified. Hallelujah. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Joy establishes the presence of God around the life of the Christian. And where his presence is, there is power for breakthrough. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 12 verse 3 that with joy we shall draw water from the wells of salvation. That is, an atmosphere of joy enhances insight and inspiration. Joy gives you insight and inspiration. Insight and inspiration to know what to do to overcome challenges. Even if you are doing well, you will do much better with joy. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 4.18 tells us that the path of the righteous is like the shining sun that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 20 in the KJV teaches us that joy in the heart facilitates answer to prayers as well as progress and speed in life. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55, 11 to 12 also reiterates this. And in Joshua 6, verse 20, we read there that joy facilitates victory in battle. 
Remember, the wall of Jericho collapsed by a shout of joy. The man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, a British minister who was born in the 19th century, was asked if he ever felt depressed. He answered, I don't ask Smith Wigglesworth how he feels. I tell him how to feel. That is a great statement indeed. Your emotions determine your motion in life. And you don't follow your feelings in life, otherwise you might end in failure. You don't wake up and say, I don't feel like going to work today and choose not to go. Smith Wigglesworth was said to have the habit of praying in the spirit for 30 minutes and then studying the word of God for 30 minutes and then praying again for 30 minutes and studying the word of God for 30 minutes and so on as the day goes on. No wonder he was a man full of the spirit of God and raised several people from the dead in his ministry. If you wait for this world to give you joy, you will die of depression. Everything is wired to conspire to make you unhappy, frustrated, and depressed because the devil is the small god of this world. And so he will do everything to steal, to kill, and to destroy your joy, your peace, your faith, and whatever is precious to you. And that is why the Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always. This means we do not wait until goings are right before we rejoice, but rather we focus on the beauty of God, the power of God, his magnificence and his glory. And then we are pushed to rejoice. We focus on who he is to us. The fact that he's our rock, he's our fortress, he's our deliverer, our strength, our sure reward, our stronghold. And then we rejoice in who he is towards us. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, your ultimate goal in life, your supreme goal in life, should be to pursue the kingdom of God. Because when your goal is focused on God and on the things of the Lord, you are less likely to suffer distraction from the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, the past is the enemy of joy, so you must get rid of the tormenting memory of past failures and errors. It is not wisdom to lament over what you can't amend. The pains of yesterday must not be allowed to swallow up the joys of tomorrow. And yesterday is history, but tomorrow is destiny. In other words, the pain of history must not be allowed to destroy the joys of destiny, which is ahead of us. Praise God. Proverbs 4 verse 18 says, The path of the just indeed is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And so forget the ugly past and look forward to the perfect day. Focus on the Lord Jesus. Focus on the kingdom of God. Let your focus be to achieve things for the kingdom of God rather than achieving things that will perish here on earth. And that is not to say you should be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly good. No, I'm just saying that your real treasure should be in the kingdom of God, should be in God himself. And let nothing make you to lose your joy. If Joseph did not have joy, despite everything he had been through, he would not have been able to receive insight and inspiration to interpret the dreams of the baker and the butler while in prison. And the butler would not have been able to recommend him to Pharaoh to interpret his dream and ultimately, he will not have become prime minister in Egypt. Amen. Praise God. Walking in the Holy Spirit is the channel of flowing in joy. 
And so pray in tongues abundantly. Ask God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Praying in tongues is a tonic for joy and not just a means of prayer in the supernatural. Sing in the Spirit often. Romans 14 verse 17 says, But the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you pray and sing in tongues, you are actually taking in heavenly antidepressants, and that will stimulate your joy and peace. A second thing we should do in this new year for a better outcome is to stop the blame game. Stop blaming God for your difficulties and for your mistakes your wrong choices and the consequences of it. Stop blaming God or other people for the negative things that have happened to you. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Stop saying, if I was not raped, I wouldn't have been so messed up today. If that drunken driver had not killed my dad, I'd have been able to finish school. And for that matter, stop blaming yourself for your problems. Forgive yourself for the wrong choices you have made. Forgive others and forgive God if need be. Holding people in unforgiveness binds you in prison as well as them. When you hold people in unforgiveness, you are holding yourself down as well in life. The Lord's Prayer says, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In Matthew 6 verse 12, When you refuse to forgive offense, you delay the answer to your prayers and you hinder your own breakthrough in life. Another thing we should do in this new year is to pray for God's help and wisdom for the year ahead. Pray for God's help and wisdom for the year ahead. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he shall direct your paths. Praise God. So, commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. He will perfect all that concerns you. Praise God. Psalm 18 verse 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. God can make a testimony out of our tests. He can make a message out of our mess. The presence of God makes the difference in our lives. His presence will provide his grace in our lives. And grace covers your errors. Grace colors your efforts. Grace makes your life colorful. It wipes away your negative past. Because grace is divine help. Psalm 121 verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Grace is available to all. It is not given on merit. It is the prerogative of God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. And remember Paul was formerly Saul. Saul was a militant, a killer, a terrorist of believers who became Paul, a preacher, a saint of God, and his past was forgiven and forgotten. It was because of grace. Grace will lift you out of the pit, out of your predicament. It is not based on who you are, but who God is to you. And do not allow the enemies of grace to hinder the grace of God in your life, such as pride, which will cause an inability to take correction or to apologize when wrong. That was the bane of King Saul. and This is another Saul now who was in the Old Testament and was the first king of Israel. He refused to apologize and repent for his sin when he offered sacrifice unto God in place of the prophet Samuel. And when you look at it critically, his sin was not as grievous as the sin of King David who committed adultery and killed the husband of Bathsheba with whom he committed adultery. But David was quick to repent, and so he enjoyed the grace of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in James 4, 6, 1 Peter 5, 5 to 6, it says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Incidentally, pride is not a function of being rich, neither is humility a function of being poor. There are rich men who are humble and poor men who are arrogant and proud. And so let us not be proud. Amen. Another thing that will hinder grace is trust in self, in personal expertise, in your education, or trust in human help. 
Let us not trust in man, but trust in God. The Bible says, woe unto him who trusts in man. Let us trust God in everything. Another thing we should do as we begin this new year is to remember that how we start determines how we end. The root determines the fruit. And it helps to start the year with waiting on God. Take time to fast and pray at the beginning of this year about the year ahead. Talk to God about the issues troubling your mind, about negative patterns around your life or family. Take time to wait on the Lord. Three days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days or 40 days as God gives you the grace. Talk to God about those things that have lingered for too long in your life which ought to have been dropped by now. For example, do you still gossip? Do you still see the negative side of everyone not walking in love? Have you been fighting negative habits and patterns in your life for a long time? Remember that your outcome is dependent on your input. Prayer is important, but you have a role to play. When you do what is right in the sight of God and you obey biblical principles, goodness and mercy will follow you. And so, as we seek God, let us also ask for grace to obey the word of God, to be doers of the word of God. Let us in this year determine to be faithful to God. Let us choose to be obedient to his word and his will. Let us determine to be faithful in our character, demonstrating Christ-like character, to the world and to the people around us so that we'll be true examples of the believer indeed and hopefully draw others into the kingdom of God. Let us also be faithful in our finances. I know the flesh is a hindrance. The world is a hindrance to the fulfillment of these godly desires. But like the Lord Jesus in Hebrews 5, 7, Let us also learn to offer up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the Lord God Almighty who is able to save us from sin and help us to live godly through Christ Jesus. Let us in this year choose to be faithful to be the doers of God's word with our money, in paying our tithes, in being faithful in giving of offerings and our first fruits and so on. Let us choose to be workers in church. Let us choose to be soul winners this year. Let us choose to do much more for the kingdom of God and the advancement of it. Let us choose to forgive. Let us let go of bitterness and malice and all hates. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Another thing we should do is to make up our minds to stop looking back at pains, failures, mistakes of the past. Paul said, forgetting all that is behind, I press toward the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. As we read earlier in Philippians 3, 13 to 14. But permit me to emphasize this point. The step in achieving this practically is immersing yourself in the word of God. Read it daily. Study it. Devour it. Memorize it meditate upon scripture verses it will change every negative trivial flippant evil thought process that we might have and help us replace them with thinking on bible scripture for example if you have the pattern of thinking "Ah, i might be falling sick when you feel a symptom in your body instead think Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And by his stripes, I am healed. If you have the pattern of speaking evil about people, then remember, God says, we shall give account of every idle word that we speak. Let us also remember, like the Proverbs 31 woman, the law of kindness is the law of her lips. If you are often fearful about how you will have your needs met, learn to think Philippians 4.19. I am a giver, and so my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so on. Let us replace negative thoughts with the word of God. Spending time investing in God's word is one of the priceless things you can do for yourself this year. Praise God. 
Another thing we should do is prayerfully assess our situation and outline practical steps that we can make in order to change our situation where it is negative. Change the roots and you will change the outcome of your situation. For example, you might need to cut off friends who are negative in outlook, critical in outlook, or who encourage you to do evil. Change friends who become nervous when it appears as if you are prospering or attaining worthwhile achievements more than they are doing. People who will not encourage you. Change people, change friends who are envious of you. You may need to stop being myopic also in your outlook in life, that is, having limited dreams. Think bigger dreams this year. You might need to spend less time on social media this year. How about determining that no day will end without feeding your spirit with the word of God? How about spending at least 30 minutes to one hour daily to read around your area of discipline in order to improve yourself? You might be a lawyer, you might be an architect, you might be an engineer or a doctor, Spend time to read around your area of discipline in order to improve yourself. Remember that a man of excellence will stand before kings. He will not stand before mere men. And your gifts will make room for you. How about registering for that MBA you have been dreaming about for years or some other masters in another area of discipline? And remember that now, you can do your master's online and get your certificate even from foreign universities. How about improving your educational status? Say, learning to read and write. You can take evening classes, you know, and learn to read and write, or take up classes to finish your secondary school certificate course. Do something to improve yourself this year. How about starting that side business you have always dreamt about in order to improve your finances? It is possible when you put yourself to it. And lastly, in order to improve outcome this year, ask the Holy Spirit if there is something he would like you to do or adjust about your situation, about your lifestyle. He knows you better than yourself. You'll be pleasantly surprised at what he might have to tell you. He might tell you to stop eating too much or to start exercising or to stop watching TV by 8 or 9 o'clock so that you use the last hour of your day to pray and study the word of God before going to bed. He might tell you to stop arguing with your spouse. After all, to be at peace is more important than being right. You'll be surprised what he might have to say. Just listen quietly to him. He knows the way through the wilderness. He knows the way by which we can overcome our challenges and become better people. Amen. And it is my prayer that by the end of this year, when people are saying there is a casting down, you will be saying there is a lifting up. For the people who know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. And that is you. Amen. And so if you really want to know God, it starts by giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you to join me as we commit our lives to the Lord God. Pray this prayer after me if you want to give your life to Jesus. And really, you should. Pray, say, Lord Almighty, I come to you in humility this day. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Make me a child of God. From today, I will live to please you and to be a doer of your will. Help me to walk uprightly before you all my days, and I pray that I shall see you someday in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. And so if you pray that prayer, I encourage you to read your Bible and pray every day. Join a godly Bible-believing church where you will be taught the word of God and grow in the nature of Christ. I encourage you also to get a Christian devotional booklet like our daily guide, our daily bread, our daily manna, seeds of destiny, open heavens, and so on. There are many out there you can buy from a Christian bookshop, or you can download one online onto your Android phone for your daily use. God bless you. 
If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at dickinessvictoria at gmail.com. Dickinessvictoria at gmail.com. God be with you. And may he grant unto you a year of victory in joy, in peace, and in righteousness. Amen.